In this video we're going to cover some of the new updates that the Power BI team has released as part of the Power BI May 2022 feature update. We'll cover features like the field parameter, error bars, rectangle select and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So let's start with this update about the new format pane being generally available. It was meant to be in GA this month but it now has been pushed to June next month. So if you still haven't gotten used to the new format pane yet, now is the time to get acquainted with it because this will be the new normal from next month onwards. Along with this, they've added an option to expand all subcategories by default. So when you expand categories, for example, it expands everything else within that category, which sort of mimics the way the old format pane works. They've also added a few more improvements to the format pane this month namely adding options for various visuals and a way to search for conditional formatting when searching for cell elements. So basically creating a synonym between the two. Canvas zooming is now available in Power BI Desktop. You're probably familiar with this feature if you use reports in the Power BI service. It's the option on the bottom right corner of the screen and it allows you to kind of zoom in out, fit the page, etc. Now you can do the same thing in Power BI Desktop. This functionality is great, especially if you're a report creator, working or moving visuals around, making sure they're aligned, things like this. It definitely makes your life a lot easier. Next is the field parameters, which is a new preview feature out now for Power BI Desktop. Basically, it allows users to dynamically change the measures or dimensions that are being analyzed in the report. I covered a similar feature in the past, personalized visuals, which lets users control and customize the visuals as they like, but it seems that the field parameters are a more user-friendly way to achieve the same thing. To start using this new feature, you first have to enable it from the preview features. Then you can create a field parameter by simply going to new parameters, then fields, then from here you can pick and choose which fields or measures you want to include in it. Once you're done and click create, it will create a new DAX parameter that you can use for your visualizations. In this example, if you add it in a legend in your visual for example, and you add it as a slicer as well, you can use the slicer to control which values are showing in your legends. There seems to be a lot more in this feature, so I'll cover it in a greater detail in a separate video in the future. Tenants now have the ability to control direct query connections to the Power BI datasets in the service. This essentially stops users from publishing composite models into the service. It's enabled by default. You can disable it for the entire organization or just specific groups. Just to note that it doesn't stop the users from creating composite models in Power BI Desktop though. So if you try to publish this report in the Power BI service, you will get a message like this. Data point rectangle select is now generally available. So this feature allows you to select multiple data points in a visual by drawing a rectangle selection. So if you're trying to simulate this in Power BI Desktop, you need to make sure you hold the control before dragging, which simulates the drag that you will do in Power BI Service, where you will just simply drag to select. Just bear in mind that this feature is only available for certain visuals and has a current limit of 3,500 data points. Error bars is a feature that released not so long ago and at that time it only worked with line charts. This time the team has enabled this error bar feature to work with combo charts as well, not just line charts. Users who have the admin role set to them in their workspaces can now view all subscriptions within it. This gives admins the ability to edit or take over subscriptions which is a more handy and centralized way to manage subscriptions in Power BI service. Auto creating a report from datasets in Power BI service is now possible, 
which generates a quick Parvi report that summarizes the data in your model. I actually covered something similar in the past, which allows you to quickly generate reports from SharePoint lists. Just note that this one only works with datasets with one table, so just bear in mind with that limitation. And lastly is the update with goals. Goal updates will now be included in the activity feed along with its status and any changes. So it allows you to basically see your progress a lot quicker. And it also includes the ability to quickly check in new values. And that's really it for this video. So as usual, I didn't cover everything that was in the feature summary updates, only the ones that was pretty interesting. If you wanted to see the full list, however, I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I'm to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one.